We see three main classes of drivers for 5G. One of those is uh, the existing consumer demand, which is driven, for example, by video and immersive multimedia. The second one is uh, the Internet of Things because we will need to connect everything. We will need to connect robots and jet engine diagnostics and things which, con which produce actually vast amounts of information, so we need wide bandwidths. And the third case is when we really enable the extremely low latency or delay in the networks. And then we can open things like a really virtual reality so that people feel that they are really in the presence of each other. There's no discernible delay. In April 2015, Nokia unveiled technology that took the mobile world by storm. What is currently the fastest implementation of 5G technology out there? We showed the demonstration in Brooklyn in April, which uh, showed how we can deliver 10 gigabits per second over the air. That seems to be the fastest which has been publicly demonstrated by now. Nokia's base station is 25% faster than its closest rival, Samsung, which demoed its 7.5 gigabit per second 5G technology in October 2014. This is a 5G unit. It may be promising in terms of performances, but from the outside it's not very glamorous. Yeah, this is a prototype unit that we are using in our research, so what matters is what's inside. So what's inside? There is similar subsystems here what are in, in normal base stations, but this is for the millimeter wave frequency, so, so this particular uh, device is using 73 gigahertz uh, RF path, and then there is a baseband path that does, that does the signal processing for our 5G. While current cell networks use anywhere between 800 and 2500 megahertz, Nokia's 5G system broke the speed record using that completely new 73,000 MHz wireless spectrum, or 73 GHz. So far, that frequency has only been used for commercial and military operations, but it lets Nokia tighten the gap between waves, allowing them to squeeze more data more tightly, but also lower the delay to transmit and receive a request opening the door to a new collection of real-world applications. 5G currently is not yet in standardization, that starts next year. But currently we are in pre-standardization research and we are working with our competition in those research programs, which is a very important part of developing the technology together. And then later on we'll compete and um, we, I think we have shown that we can compete pretty well. Expect exceedingly high throughput than you see today. So it's throughput measured in tens of gigabits per second. Very low latency, single digit latency which means the response time uh, from your request to the action you get from the network will be much shorter than it is today. Uh, and expect a network that can handle the ability to, uh, to accommodate multiple millions and possibly billions of machine and machine connections. When you look at the range of uh, opportunities that are created by throughput measured in gigabits in a wireless environment, the opportunities are almost limitless. So we expect a lot of innovation to occur once that network foundation is set. Uh, that'll open up new use cases um, and new customer scenarios that we can't really even envision today. At some point in time, absolutely, you'll need a 5G phone. Um, uh, and that's part of the evolution of wireless technology overall.